The film Tortured for Christ tells the life story of Romanian pastor and Voice of the Martyrs founder Richard Warmbrand. The movie's release in March coincided with the 50th anniversary of Warmbrand's classic autobiography by the same title. Directed by John Groders, the movie is now available at torturedforchrist.com. In the post-war II era of communist atheism, the film depicts Pastor Warmbrand's arrest, 14 years of imprisonment and torture for his public faith in Christ. Were there specific artistic, technical considerations you had to give for shooting the torture scenes? If you read Richard's books, Tortured for Christ or In God's Underground, he describes a lot more than it's in this film. Now, we didn't shoot it in a way that exploits goriness, but we also didn't just avoid it. Because this is what the communists did and do to people. They treat them like animals, and they have lost their humanity in this cruelty. Warmbram's film story begins prior to his arrest, as the communists convened the Congress of Cults, so named to demean Romania's religious leaders. And they brought all the ministers, rabbis, preachers of the, around the whole country together to sing the praises of communism, to, to roll out the propaganda, to really conscript their collaboration and cooperation with the party. And if you didn't do that, they would throw you in prison. So there's a scene in the film where Richard and Sabina are sitting there. They're listening to these communist speeches, one after the other. And Sabina whispers to Richard, They are spitting in the face of Christ. And he stands up. He comes down and says, We're here not to praise a political party, but to praise Christ. And it was being broadcast on the radio, so this, this was a terrible moment for the communists. They cut his microphone, they ended the broadcast, and he was a marked man, and he knew it. So John, overseeing the narrative of his life, looking at it now, yeah. what about Richard Wormbrand most impacts you? Richard grew up a atheistic Jew. He was off and running in a pretty successful career. He was gonna be wealthy, but when he met Christ, I mean, all of that talent got reassigned to the kingdom. He just had this passionate desire to reach, well, two, two groups, Nazi Germans and communist Russians. Richard thought about offense. Well, how do we reach these people for Christ? They know nothing about Jesus. He looked at these Russians and he saw emptiness. And he didn't feel empty and he wanted to give them life. And Richard, who you know ultimately survives or we wouldn't have these stories, he gets to the freedom of the American church. And at times, he said, I so miss the fellowship we once had in those days in the underground church. John, the tortured, persecuted church is happening all over the world. In our free world, are we ready for it? If we're going to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us, don't just wait until you feel like it. I will never feel like it. So I gotta ask God to give me a heart for these people who I know are my enemies right now. And through that, maybe some of them will no longer be enemies. Maybe we can win some of them through, through our love. Richard and Sabina modeled that. Interesting, John, isn't it? After founding Voice of Martyrs, Richard passes in 2001. He outlasted that <laughs> atheism. Is that fitting? <laughs> All this will pass, but my word will never pass away. So what part of the word we have in us is eternal. And here we are, 70 years later, and he's speaking to us through his faithfulness. And you're right, no one's listening to Ceausescu anymore. We're listening to Wormbrand. That's awesome. <laughs> what do you hope audiences will take away? Not information. It's not even that we take away, oh, these poor people suffer. I hope audiences take away worship of God because we recognize the power of God then and now. We recognize how exciting it is to be a part of a kingdom that's advancing.